Okay, family, I'm coming to you um, with a quick video on canning. So, this is a Presto pressure canner, and this one is a 16 quart. Um, so, it has a regulator, okay? And this regulator, um, you can take these off depending upon your elevation, which you'll have to research for your area. But um, our elevation is um, above a thousand, um, so um, we have to use um, all three pieces um, of the regulator. Sorry, all three pieces of the regulator um, to equal 15 pounds of pressure, which goes on top of this. All right. So this is the um, pressure canner that I'm using, the Presto. Okay, hopefully you can see. Now, this is the vent pipe, okay? This is what some might call a little nipple, and this is also um, a pressure plug, and that helps the canner to um, release um, pressure as needed so that, you know, it doesn't explode as some people think it might, all right? Before you um, can each and every time you can you have to inspect your can or make sure everything's clean make sure everything's in working order so you definitely want to test your little nipple thing here your vent you basically want to look through this hole and hold it up in the light and make sure you can see light coming through it and as you can see I can so you want to make sure that's clear if it's not clear you need to clean it and then your seal here comes out and you need to make sure that you oil this lightly with some vegetable oil. Now I oil it with my fingers and I do it all the way around and I even do the inside. You want to keep this moist so it doesn't get dry and cracked and you won't have to replace it that often. And I do that with every canning session. Okay. Next is the canning rack. You cannot use your pressure canner to can your food without a rack. You do not want the jars to be touching the very bottom of the canner. You might get a failed, um, a failed product, failed seal, and your jars may break. So you have to have this. Um, I usually position my canner, because I'm right-handed, um, so that this little um, arrow is on my right and that way uh, with my other hand as I'm putting in the water according to my canner's instructions I can just gauge the little notches of the fill line for pressure canning so typically for this canner I think it's about three quarts of water that I would fill it up to and it would fill up to this little notch that's way down here so again, I'm pressure canning, not pressure cooking. These other notches here relate to if you are pressure cooking food that's not going to be in a can. And that's a whole different process. But to, um, yeah, to pressure can, to can your own foods, that's what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my canner, clean everything, oil the seals, check everything, and then I'll come back to you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> put a little bit of vegetable oil, or you can use any oil um, that you prefer, but my canner instruction says vegetable oil, so that's what I'm using, to just lightly oil um, this here, and then I'll also be putting um, some oil here all around the lid. Um, according to my canner instructions okay and I have my oil here and I'm just going to put a little bit on my fingers and then massage it all around the seal to lubricate the seal okay so that's the next step to prepare our canner for canning okay we have checked our canner washed our canner and again follow your canners instructions mine's is a presto pressure canner 16 quart okay now some other things that you might need um, to can 
And again, you'll not always use the same um, items or tools to can. It just depends on what you are canning. So some of the tools you'll need is you'll need the jar lifter, which I have a couple in case one breaks. You want to have a backup of all your tools and supplies in case something breaks. So I might even get a third one of these when I get a chance. But this is the jar lifter, as you can see. Whoops, sorry. As you can see by the picture here, it's a jar lifter. All right. You also want a ladle. Okay. Um, and you want a funnel. Okay. Now, you can buy this. Um, Ball has a little canning tool kit that you can get um, the jar lifter, the funnel, the um, magnet for um, the lids after you sterilize them, and for the debubbler, which I'm trying to find. The debubbler is what you stick inside the jars to get any air pockets and bubbles out of the jar before you get ready to pressure can them, okay? So that's what we got there in my little kit. You also need an extra pot, um, depending upon the recipe that you're doing. If you are making jelly or jam and you need to um, make your juice for that um, process first, um, it's handy to have another type of um, pot with a lid to do that. Also, you can use this for the boiled water if your product requires um, water to go inside the jars with the product, okay? You'll also need um, some canning and pickling salt. Now, you can use this or you can use um, pink Himalayan salt or sea salt, but you cannot use regular table salt, that Morton iodized salt. You cannot do that or you're going to get a very cloudy, nasty product. Okay. And again, I already mentioned about the um, oil or vegetable oil to be able to oil um, your canner, the seal, and around the edges of the lid. You'll also need a pad. I don't know if you can see this very well. Here we go. You also need a pad um, in order to place your jars on after they come out of the canner. Um, and that's why you see those rings on there, because I've done just that. You'll also need a couple of dark um, tea towels um, so that as you're preparing the food and canning them in the jars, um, you'll be able to catch any debris that may fall all over the counter. Um, your kitchen counter and all areas should definitely be clean and sterilized. I do them do it with hot soapy water and bleach. You know, you do it with um, whatever choice you want to, but that's what we do before we can any of our products and we thoroughly wash our hands. So everything in the kitchen has to be sterilized and clean. You'll also need vinegar. Um, the vinegar is what you're going to use. Um, to clean off the rims of the jars after you've checked them, okay? You'll also need canning jars. Now, I use specifically ball canning jars, okay? Um, I typically use, for the most part, the pints, half pints, and quarts. I use the half pints for um, jelly. I use the pints for vegetables and meats, and then I use the quarts more so for bigger things or meals or potatoes. So that's typically what I use them. Once you open your pack of jars and you're going to can something, you do not want to just start canning. You need to wash these thoroughly in hot soapy water. So that's what you see here. And I'm in the process of washing not only the jars, but the lids. This is a lid to a jar and the rings. And you also want to make sure and check that there is no rust, no rust in your rings or your lids, that nothing is damaged. You also want to check your um, jars to make sure there's no cracks or anything along the rim, okay? That everything looks good with your jar. So I'll get to it and I'll come back um, with the next part of our video. Okay, I'm back. The other thing that you will need as a part of your um, process is you want to lightly simmer, or if I can get it, is your lids. 
and you want to put them in a pot with a little bit of water covering the lids and you just want to lightly simmer you do not want to boil them but you want to lightly simmer them just before the time you're about to put your jars in the canner so I would say probably about 20 minutes 20 minutes before you know you're ready to start put loading your um, filled up jars with your product um, into your canner you want to lightly simmer these for about you know uh, 10 to 50 probably 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes will be good so just a light simmer not boil because you're just trying to soften this orange seal around the lid so that during the canning process you're going to get a good seal on your jars okay and you can use any small pot for that I have this one the next thing we're going to talk about is um, books you need resources um, I would not be relying on YouTube videos or websites um, specifically what I would be doing is investing in some canning books so for example this is just one that I have um, the, the all-new ball book of canning and preserving you can get that on Amazon I also on Amazon ordered the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. I also got the Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving. And there's a lot of different recipes in here. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is you are going to have to do your own research. So I do recommend going to the USDA's um, website for home canning. Okay. And you need to do your research to um, check what is your elevation for your area, your city, you know, your state, where you are, your town, exact location. You need to know what your elevation is. So I would suggest doing some research so that you can accurately look up your elevation for your area. That is important because as I said in the beginning, um, as far as using this type of canner, which is a Presto, okay, using this type of canner that has a um, regulator, there is no dial gauge that's going to tell you what the pressure is. So in that particular case, what we're going to need to do is make sure we know our elevation for um, where we are located um, and we're going to have to base the pounds per pressure that we need to use for our canning processes um, on that so I'm above um, a thousand for elevation so for me I have to can at 15 pounds per pressure so I have to use all three let me show you so I have to use turn on some light so I have to use all three of these pieces for this regulator. Now, if you are under that, you could take these off depending upon what your elevation is. Most people are probably using 10 to 15 pounds of pressure. Again, it depends on your elevation. You have to do the research. I can't do it for you. Okay. Now. The other thing I want to mention is your canner may have recipes in it for canning food. Be careful. You still want to follow the ball book of canning um, and USD guidelines to make sure that this canner recipe is giving you accurate instructions. If it's not in line with what the Ball Book of Canning or the USDA Home Canning Book says, then I would increase my time, okay? So I would just increase my time. I wouldn't go by this. I would probably go by um, their website or um, the book if you have the book, all right? Just do your research before you can exactly per the recipe in here. If it doesn't mirror, if fortunately from what I've seen, um, some of the recipes in here that I've used do mirror um, the ball in USDA's book um, for um, canning time based upon it being a pint or a quart. So something to keep in mind there. So I'll come back to you with the products that we're going to be canning.
Okay, family, so we have our canning tools. As I explained earlier, we have our ladle, our jar lifter, our debubbler, our magnet for our lids, and our funnel. We have our canning salt, we have our vinegar, okay? We have our jars, and the product that we're gonna can is carrots. Now, I just grabbed these carrots um, as a quick, fast, and a hurry um, tutorial. Um, normally, I would um, go ahead because you get probably a better value to just go buy big, huge bags of carrots and um, peel them and um, blanch them and slice them up, or slice them up, then blanch them yourself. It's going to be much more healthy and natural for you, okay? But to show you a quick, fast, and a hurry video, I just went and got frozen ones so I, for the purpose of the video, okay? And our jars have been washed, cleaned, and sterilized. Now, well, not sterilized in this particular case because they're going in the pressure canner. Most people don't know this, but if you're going to water bath can, you have to sterilize your jars, your lids, and your vans. But if you're going to pressure can, because your jars are going to be in the canner at a much longer period of time for the canning process, according to the ball canning book, you do not have to sterilize them anymore, but it's your choice. Most times I will go ahead and sterilize them anyway, but this particular time I did not because this is just for the sake of this video and I'm gonna have a long um, canning process for the carrots anyway, so I'm just like, it's no problem. And I haven't had any issues um, with botulism or anything um, when versus when I have or haven't sterilized the jars because I've opened the can and the food was fine and nothing was wrong with it. So we're gonna open these up and fill our jars. So the first thing you wanna do is, you know, open your product or in the case of if you're cutting up your carrots fresh, um, you, you wanna load them in the jar. This um, debubbler also serves as a way to measure your headspace for your jar. So you don't want to fill your jars more than an inch of headspace here. So sorry, my camera wasn't right there, but yeah. So this allows you to measure your headspace. I usually do not fill above an inch of headspace. So I only fill the jar to right here. And that's the majority of everything I can. Some people go a little closer, but I choose not to. I keep it right here at this line, okay? But if you wanted to measure, you, you can use this for measuring, okay? For in, um, one inch headspace. That's basically what you're using um, this part of the tool for. The other part of the tool, the other end is to debubble, get all the bubbles out of the jar before you close up the jar for the canning process okay so I'll come back when I have the jars filled with the carrots all right so now we have our jars filled with our um, frozen carrots okay we've left one inch headspace on all of our jars so and it's really important when you're loading um, the jars with your food to make sure you have them um, on a towel and just fold it over so that if you need to tap down lightly to get your food to settle down into the jar you can do that um, we used our funnel to put the food in and next we are going to put liquid in here according to the canner instructions so we've boiled some water um, and once it comes to a boil we are going to now um, fill up the jars up to the one inch headspace right here with the boiling water okay yep yes isn't it no no that's not ready yet but well the water's not ready yet so we're gonna come back to you when the water's ready and show you the process of filling the jars with the boiling water okay now we're going to take our boiled water from our kettle and pour it into our jars according to our instructions for canning carrots and again, from your Ball Book of Canning or your USDA website or Book of Canning. 
your canner um, might have instructions for recipes, but you still want to check it against the ball or USDA canning book guidelines to make sure it's consistent with that process listed there. Especially if you're a newbie, just learning the process. And again, you just want to fill it to the one inch head space just below the rim of the jar here. And you want to try your best to cover, completely cover your product. All right. All right. We'll come back to you when we're getting ready to do the rest of the process. All right. Now that we have our jars filled with the boiling um, water, now we're going to add um, our canning salt. Now, this um, is what I like to do because I want a little bit of salt in there, but you don't have to. I'm using one fourth teaspoon of salt in each jar. So you just put it in each one. I didn't forget any. And now we are okay to put our lids on. So. Oh yeah, thank you. My husband just reminded me that we need to wipe the lids with our vinegar that's here. Good looking out. You wanna do that? I'll let you do it. And again, you would have already checked all of your rims after you wash them in hot soapy water um, or during the sterilate before you go to sterilize them on the stove in um, boiling water. You would have already checked the rims to make sure there's no crack and you, um, they're all good. You have already done that. some of this out the way so we take our lids that have been simmering in hot water on low and they've been doing that so we can loosen that orange seal so that our product will get a good seal on it. Actually, there's one, wait, don't, don't do the rest. Wait one second, there's one thing we forgot to do. Before you put these lids on, these lids on, you have to debubble your jars. And that's what this debubbler is for. So let's, what I'm going to do is take those back off. Sorry about that. And just quickly debubble these. Just take the debubbler around the jar. To get out any bubbles or air pockets. As you can see, air pockets, air bubbles are coming up. You just want to make sure you do that. And that's probably what we should have done before the vinegar step, but that's alright. Because we're not we're not dealing with any greasy food or anything, so um, which is fortunate, so we're good. All right, so we've debubbled. Now we put the lids on. My apologies, family. You would debubble, then you would wipe the jars off with the vinegar, okay? And um, then you would put the lids on. And then once you're done putting the lids on, you will put the rings on finger tight. And finger tight just means you put it on tight enough just to close it but 
not too not too tight um, otherwise you might have issues one getting the getting it off in the first place and you might get some siphoning where some of the liquid in the jar will come out if you're doing that way too tight it's just like you, you screw it on tight enough like you would something in the refrigerator like you know a jar of jelly you know just tight enough just to close it but not to try to put it on so tight no one can get it off you don't want to put it that tight finger tight you're not trying to make it so tight that you can't get it off later Ready to, and let me just show you how to. Check before. Check okay, keep on, keep on here. Okay, I'm just checking them. I'm just turning it once. I'm not trying to get it on there tighter and tighter. You do that, it's going to not be a good thing. So then what you do then is to load them into the canner. I know that, but I'm just saying this is how you would load them, okay? If they were hot. If these were hot. These aren't hot, so we can just grab them and put them in. Now, please note, this is a cold process because... These were frozen carrots. We put boiling water in it, but the jars are still cold. So when you put them, let me just quickly show you, into your canner, your canner is not on and the water is not hot. Your canner has cold water filled up in it because your jars are cold. You do not want to shock your jars and crack your jars by trying to put cold jars into a hot can. You want to put cold jars into a cold can. So I'm going to let you do that so everybody can see you loading them. Now if you were, if these were um, filled with a product that was hot and the food and the contents were hot, then we could have started the canner up on a low setting to get the water in the canner warm and keep it warm or pretty much hot. Not boiling, but hot to, to start it off. But you don't need to do that in this point, in this particular process, because these are cold, cold jars going in a cold can. All right? So as you can see, to, for this particular canner, you have to align the arrows together in order to close it. You do the reverse in order to open it. So the canner is now locked and aligned and you want to look and check your canner and make sure everything is locked and aligned. Okay? And it is. So good. Now, the next step in the process is depending upon your stove, you want to, for the most part, put it on a medium, medium to high setting. I found with our electric stove, which I don't care for electric stoves, but our electric stove, I typically put the setting on about seven, okay? But you could put it on nine, and then once um, steam starts to consistently vent from here, you could probably turn it down to seven. I find seven to be our sweet spot. So for right now, I'm going to put it on nine until steam starts to vent from here. Okay. So what we're going, what we're looking for is 
we are looking for this to start venting a f continuous flow of stream out of here of steam a stream of steam okay once you see that you're then going according to your canners instructions you're then going to let it vent for 10 minutes but only after you continuously see a long stream of steam venting out of the vent pipe once you see that then you turn on your timer or your manual timer if you have one of your phone alarm or what have you for 10 minutes you have to let the steam vent out of here once that happens after that happens and again according to your canon's instructions for presto that's what the instructions say after you vent for 10 minutes okay the next step is you put the regulator on let me remind you what the regulator looks like this is the regulator. According to your elevation, you would know how many pounds of pressure this would be. If none of these rings are on it, this represents five pounds, this represents 10 pounds of pressure, and all three together represent 15 pounds of pressure. You do not put that on until after you've vented your canner for the 10 minutes, okay? And then I'll talk about the next process after that. All right, family, we are back. And as you can see, at least I hope you can see, um, the canner is now venting. This is what you want to get to. Now, you'll notice I have this on a 9, but now that it's starting to vent, I'm going to turn it back down to 7, okay? Um, so now you want your canner to vent for 10 minutes once you see a continuous stream of steam venting from the can. So I'm going to turn on my kitchen timer for 10 minutes. And this is according to my canner's instructions for the can. All right? That needs to vent for 10 minutes. You just said for 10 minutes, you just started Okay, family, our timer has gone off and our canner has vented for exactly 10 minutes. So I turn the kitchen timer off and now I'm going to get the regulator. This is the regulator here. And again, I'm using 15 pounds of pressure according to my location and elevation for my location which i looked up online okay which is above um a thousand so i am now putting the regulator over the vent pipe okay and as you recall i originally had the canner going at nine on the now i brought it down to seven so that I can regulate at a very steady, steady, steady temperature, okay? So what we're looking for after we put the regulator on top of the vent pipe of the canner, we're looking for it to do a little bit of a jiggle motion. Once the, the regulator starts to jiggle on top of the canner, then we will be able to set our timer. Now, let's talk about the time. According to the instructions on our Presto canner, we can do a maximum amount of jars, um, regular jars, you could do 12 half pints, 10 pints, and seven quarts in our canner, if it was regular jars. Now, if you're using wide moth jars, you can do eight half pints, eight pints, and seven quarts. Okay, just to be mindful of that, depending upon how many, um, jars you're canning. Now, what I was talking about earlier about following um, and comparing what your canner's recipe is for um, canning versus what the ball book of canning shows, you definitely want to compare it. So the canner has a recipe here for carrots, which we have, and we raw pack. So we raw pack or cold pack, some people call it, 
the carrots, okay? We put them in the mason jars and we left one inch of head space. The instructions say to cover with boiling water, leaving one inch head space, put the lids on, and process at 10 pounds of pressure. Mind you, we are at a higher elevation above a thousand, so what we want to do is 15 pounds. Now it says here, if you're doing pints, it's 25 minutes, quarts, 30 minutes. Now let's compare it to the ball guide of preserving. According to ball, for our carrots, if we are doing raw or cold cat, okay, pretty much has the same instructions, okay? But get down to the process. It also says 10 pounds of pressure, but again, that depends on your elevation, okay? And it says process pint jars for 25 minutes, quarts for 30 minutes. So it is consistent. So in this case, this case, okay, it mirrors what the ball book of canning says. So it is fine to use this recipe in this book okay you really do have to be careful and compare um, also with the USDA one too so sometimes the recipes in these canner books that go with your manual may not be accurate and consistent with the tested process in ball okay so I just wanted to make you aware of that so once our canner regulator starts to jiggle gently and rock back and forth, we're gonna set our timer for 25 minutes because we have pints that we are canning. We are not canning quarts, we are canning pints of carrots today, okay? And once we are getting ready to see the little jiggle, we'll come back. All right, family, as you can see, the regulator is starting to gently rock back and forth. So now, we see that the little nipple of the scanner lid is up. And on the other side, you can see a little bit that that little plug is raised. A little black plug over there is raised. So we are good to go. Yay. So, now we can set our timer for 25 minutes for our pint. So, Hand doesn't get burned by all the steam everywhere. 25 minutes. And we're doing 15 pounds of pressure because our elevation is high. Okay? Alright, we'll come back when the alarm goes off. Okay, family. So now our timer has went off and the carrots have processed for the 25 minutes. And we have turned off the eye on the stove. And now you do not want to move your canner and you do not want to open your canner until, number one, the regulator starts rocking, stops rocking, excuse me, stops rocking. And this little nipple is down, which means the canner is back down to zero pressure. Okay, again, do not move your canner. Do not try to open your canner until your regulator stops moving and this little nipple falls back down, which means your canner is now at zero pressure. Very, very, very important. Do not move your canner. Do not try to open the canner. Do not try to take the regulator off of the canner. Okay? Let it all come down to pressure slowly. Okay? Let's be safe. Okay? And follow the instructions for your canner. Okay? All right. We'll come back when it's time to open the canner. All right, family. Okay, so our canner has now cooled down. And what you're looking for is your regulator has stopped jiggling. And your little nipple here has dropped and it's no longer up. 
that's how you know it is safe to now open your can okay now when you go to twist it open you want to twist it open okay away from your face so you don't get burned okay from the steam we're going to show you how you should open it Just open it slowly and gently and hold the lid away from your face okay there you go and now you see our perfectly canned carrots and now what you'll do is you will carefully use your jar lifter you hear it sealing that little pop means it just sealed you carefully take them out with your jar sealer I mean your jar lifter excuse me and you place them on a padded surface and after you get all of the jars out, sorry, we're doing some other food prep over here. After you get them all out, then you are going to cover them with um, a dish towel, a couple of dish towels, okay? And you let them sit overnight and for a good 12 hours. Sometimes I've even done 24 hours, but um, you let them cool off over 12 to 24 hours. Most people do 12, I do almost 24. I do usually a, a whole entire day. I just let them sit. And you keep them covered. They should not be exposed to a whole bunch of light. So that's why you cover them with some tea towels, okay? And that is how you pressure can carrots. Take care. One other thing to note. Um, once your jars are um, cooled off um, after you wait the 12 or 24 hours, okay, the next thing you're going to do before you put them away in a cool, dark place in your basement or your pantry, you will be taking the rings off, okay, and then you will be pressing in the middle of the lid of the canner and the can to make sure it doesn't bounce back up. Because if it does, you don't have a seal. But if it stays solid and you don't hear a noise and it has sealed, you're wonderful. But if you go to um, open it, not open it, if you go to put your finger on it and press on the middle portion of the lid and it pops back up and makes any sound, then you don't have a good seal. And you should probably just go ahead and use that product within a week. Put it in your refrigerator and use it in a week. But if you have a good seal and your jars all pop and you're able to press down and it stays firm, then you're good to go. And again, when these cool off and you put them away, you wanna take the rings off, these little bands off, and you just wanna gently wash off or wipe off or wash off your jars dry them and then store and put them away in a cool dark place they should not be exposed to light okay per the um canning instruct home canning instructions okay take care